us as we enter into this new series also, Lord. Lord, that you may give myself the utterance in the name of Jesus. Make my tongue even to be as a pen of a ready writer, Lord. Touch every individual, Lord. Touch their ears. Touch our hearts, Lord. Let it be indicted in a good matter indeed. As we thank you, Lord, for the service today and for all that you shall reveal. As your word says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And today, by your grace and mercy, we shall hear those words, and we shall be blessed indeed. Thank you for those who are here. Bring those who are on their way safely also, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beginning this series, finally. You thought we would never get there, didn't you? <laughs> well, the first time, um, as you all know, or some of you actually, not all of you were here at the time, that we did this subject was um, over 10 years ago, in 2007 through to 2008, and did some parts of it in 2009 as well. Um, so this is over 10 years later, and obviously you learn more, you pick up more over 10 years, I hope. And um, it's going to be a few weeks um, to complete this, and still it won't be completed. Um, but it's very important for us to understand this subject, and you'll see why. It'll become evident why this subject is very important indeed. The Bible says, prove all things. So, you know, you're, you're happy. You've got a Bible sitting in front of you now, and you, you have a given thought as to where this Bible came from, how this Bible got to you. And why many people seem to have different Bibles today. First of all, I want to ask you all just to pull out your King James Version Bible. Come on, bring it out. Let's do a test. Amen. And we're going to do more tests in the coming weeks. Um, first of all, just turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, please. Genesis 1, 1. I just want to do a test with your King James Version Bible. Because there are counterfeit King James Versions. Yes. All right. There are also counterfeit King James Version Bibles. Um, so tell me when you got it. This, this series, I've, I, I was going to name it Holy Men of God Spake As They Were Moved. Um, but I decided to name it The Mouth of God instead. Okay, The Mouth of God. Help me say The Mouth of God. The mouth of God. Amen. We're going to read Deuteronomy in a second. But a subheader is holy men of God spake as they were moved. And we're going to go to that scripture um, very soon. Okay? Look at that assortment of, dare I say, lovely Bibles. <laughs> Colourful, but very deadly indeed. Very deadly indeed. All right. You got Genesis chapter 1? All right. Who has got, in the beginning, God created the heaven, not heavens. Who's got, has anyone got heavens? Don't be afraid. <laughs> it's not your fault, it's okay. No one's got heavens. We're doing well so far. You sure? In the beginning, God created the heaven, not heavens. You hear a lot of people say heavens, don't you? Yeah, well, it shouldn't be heaven, it's heaven. What about spirit? The spirit um, that moved? Is your spirit capital S or small s? Has anyone got small s? We are doing well so far, but I'm still going to test you some more in the coming weeks. So I'll leave you at that for now. Don't get too happy yet. Okay, because there's weeks coming in which we're going to see if your King James Version is a true King James Version, authorized version. You've got small s, culprit. <laughs> so what, which Bible is that? That's my wife. I love her, actually, you know, so you know what I mean. <laughs> I know that's your Bible. You've got big s. Amen. Does it say heavens? Heavens? No, just heaven. Heaven. But then the, when it says the spirit moved. The spirit of God moved. moved. Small, s. Small s. That's counterfeit. Who's it by? Um, 
I hope it's not. There you go. That's why it's a counterfeit. I knew they all. And I could smell a rat. Thomas Nelson Publishing, the ones who did New King James Version. Um, and if you've got one by Zondervan as well, I smell a rat as well. Okay? So if you've got a Zondervan King James Version Bible, it's a counterfeit. I gave you which one? Good. No, that, that's TBS, isn't it? That's the one Eslin supplies. It's a, it's a true one. <laughs> I know that. I know that one. Amen. So we're going to um, <clears throat> look at. Let's go to Deuteronomy, please. Deuteronomy chapter eight. It's a scripture we were reading last week, but um, I want to bring it into focus again um, because it's very important indeed. Say amen when you're there. Amen. If you can help me read, let's read from verse two to verse three. And remember last week. We, um, during the Soul That Sinneth, It Shall Die series, we spoke about the Word of God and we said a lot of people tend to see this scripture as man shall not live by bread alone, but in their heads they're actually thinking, but also by the Word of God. Or they're thinking, um, it says only here in, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says alone in the book of Matthew. Um, but they're, they're thinking, man shall not live by bread only, but also by, or, or partly by. Now, when it says man shall not live by bread alone, or only, it's saying God exclusively, his word only shall be lived by. So man shall not live by bread alone, or only, but by every, exclusive every word of God or every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord okay uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 says the mouth of God here we see um, the mouth of the Lord so let's read verse 2 to verse 3 1 to 3 and go so our main scripture 1 to 3 and go mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That what? So, so, one second. God just felt like making us starve. No. He suffered us to hunger for this very purpose. Can you imagine? He made you hunger. He made you hunger so that you learn a very spiritual message. And that spiritual message is that man, go on, say it for me, that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So I made you hungry to teach you a lesson. I didn't make you hungry to teach you that you could partly live by the, what I made you hungry for and, and my word. No, I made you hungry. I shut off sometimes a food supply to teach you a spiritual lesson that you must rely on the spiritual resources and not on the carnal resources. Yeah, on the spiritual resources and not the carnal resources. Man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord of man live. And we, we, gave, we gave three ways to, to, to basically bring that out, to expound that. Number one, the word of God must become your necessary food. Your only necessary food, nothing more. It must be the word of God. Moses, Moses survived on the mountains for 40 days and 40 nights without food. No food, no drink, no water. No food. It was in the presence of God. Okay? That was spiritual resources. So, we said the necessary food. That deals with lust of the flesh. The second thing is that God's word must be believed more than what your eyes can see. God's word must be believed more than what your eyes can see. That deals with the lust of the eyes. 
lust of the eyes. And the third thing is that God's word must be more than your experiences that you've had. Because we live by our experiences. Oh, she did me so so, or he did me so so. No, no, no. God's word has to overtake that. It doesn't matter what he did me or she did me. God said, forgive, I forgive. It doesn't matter about my experiences from the past. I'm not living according to what I know from the past or how I feel or the way I want things to be, but the word of God. If God's word says it, I must do it. And that deals with the pride of life. That deals with the pride of life. So those three areas are covered. Essentially, we must deal with the resources of God, spiritual resources, exclusively. That's what trusting in God means. That's what putting your confidence in God means. It means that God only is your trust or your confidence. God only. Because God doesn't need help from anything else. Okay, so when, when God becomes that, those resources for us and nothing more we need, now we know we're moving on. Now you know you're moving on. Uh, until then, oh, I got no food. Oh, no. We're not there yet. We can say this word as much as we want, but we're not there yet. Oh, no, this is happening to me. Oh, why does she, why he, why they, why? We're not there yet. <laughs> okay? God's, God's word is not the only resource for us. Yes, we can slip into that sometimes, but we mustn't stay there. We mustn't stay there. We must come out of that. So that's a very important scripture. And that's our basis scripture. There's another um, scripture that we're going to read in a second before we look at these assorted, colorful Bibles here. And there's quite a lot of them, isn't there? And that's not even all of it. Apparently, there's 200 versions coming out. No, 200 versions out already. And no, it's more now. It's probably 250 or so around that out. And I think there's six every year coming out or so. Six every year. Maybe it's slowed down a bit now because they're getting tired. But they've got to do a revamp of the old one and do another revamp of that one and do another revamp of... Because their, their words never land. But God's word is settled in heaven. Okay? It's settled already in heaven. Their words never land. They just keep going over and over and over and over again. And you see what I mean. These Bibles are despicable. They are satanic to the core these are the devil's Bibles. And I'll get in a lot of trouble with a lot of people, but it's all right. These are Bibles straight from hell. Satan himself has inspired a lot of these Bibles here. All of these Bibles, actually, except for King James. And you see what I'm saying? God is not the author of confusion. You can't have one set of Bibles that come from one manuscript, another Bible that comes from a different manuscript, and then we're supposed to use them however we want when the manuscripts disagree with each other. Isn't God God because all of his words are true? Every word of God? Does God need help? We, we are setting a high standard. We want a Bible that is perfect. I didn't hear much amen for that. You don't, you don't know what it means, that's why. <laughs> We want a Bible that is perfect. How can you go out to evangelize if you're not sure if your Bible's perfect or not? You know, you get to a specific passage, like, I'm not sure. Because, you know, there's some passages that say, mm, there's a footnote that says, some other readings read this. Mm, so I'm not too sure about that one there. You won't be able to evangelize. You won't even be able to convince yourself. Because the authority is being challenged. The authority is being challenged, so you can't even convince your own self. And that's what makes people just relax after a while, say, you know what, let me just relax, put, put my leg up, get a cigar in my mouth and get over it. I just relax now because there's, we're not sure about the authority. A lot of people are not sure about God. And as you will see, all of these Bibles, and I'll prove it to you, all they're showing, all they're trying to show is that there is no God. They could put God in there as much as they want. All of these Bibles are just trying to show that there is no God. Because this is a bit of an um, unstable God. One minute he puts this, next minute he puts that. No, we demand a high standard. Because we believe that our God 
is able to preserve his word from generation to generation. And I'm confident today that there is a Bible that exists that is perfect. Not a jot or a tittle, not a yacht or a tittle is wrong. Every part of it is perfect. Even the full stop, even the comma, even the semicolon, even the colon, everything is perfect. Oh, I thank God there's a Bible like that. It exists. Otherwise, what kind of incompetent God are we serving who can't keep his word? Well, that's what they're saying. That's what they're trying to show you. There's an incompetent God. He can't keep his word. So there's no God. So chill out, relax. We're not sure about who the authority is. Let's just relax. That's why many Christians today are very relaxed. Because they haven't, they haven't grabbed the true word of God and, and sat with it and studied it and read it and cherished it and they enjoyed it up to a certain degree. <laughs> People say they enjoy reading the word of God. I do too, but not always. <laughs> not always. Sometimes it, it pulls me. Sometimes it challenges me. Sometimes it yanks me. So it's not always an enjoyable read. But in the end it will yield a peaceable fruit of righteousness to everyone who is exercised thereby. We have a perfect word here. It is called the King James Version Bible. Let's go to 2 Peter, please. 2 Peter chapter 1. And this is our second scripture that we're going to be using in the next few weeks as well. 2 Peter chapter 1. Say amen when you're there. Amen. We're going to read from verse 16 to 21. Verse 16 to 21. You're going to see there's a lot of objections that people have. In fact, let me just... This is what we're going to be dealing with in the next few weeks here. These are the subjects that we're going to be covering. Okay, we're going to um, examine the falsehood of newer Bibles. And it is false. It's big. The superiority of the authorized version. That's the name um, for it. Um, you could say otherwise known as King James Version, or some people say King James Version, otherwise known as Authorized Version, 1611. We're going to also cover um, on manuscripts and the manuscript ev evidences. What, what are you holding in your hand? Where did it come from? Where did it come from? Where did this Bible you're reading every day come from? Do you, do you care? The Bible says prove all things. Okay, prove it. It has to be traceable. It's got to be traceable. And also as well, your life has to be in line with it. We need to prove all things. Okay, so men died for this. Men were burnt on the stake for this. Okay, men perished whilst they had a hand in bringing this Bible to you. Especially a man called William Tyndale. Okay, he was, he was involved in the process of bringing this Bible to you. He wasn't in the committee that translated the King James Version, but he was, he was prior to them, and he was part of the process. And he was burnt on the stake for this. You see how important it is? Would you be burnt on the stake for this? Well, you say, I've made a mistake. <laughs> Remember... There's a lot of people who don't think that the word of God is worth it anymore. It's too much hassle because persecution comes because of the word. And it's too much of a hassle, so they just pack it in. That's the ground that couldn't take the sun anymore, the persecutions. But everything, every persecution is for the word of God. And okay, so we're going to talk also about the objections to the King James Version. It's a moral objection, not intellectual. Okay, quit anyone trying to say it's because of this it's because of that we we are going to disprove every objection to the king james version bible every one of them we're going to disprove in the next few weeks okay so that you can see for yourself that it's not an intellectual argument at all it's moral people love their sin they love darkness and it's also as well um, the reason for the objection to the king james version is actually dis disable spiritual living Okay, they know how to 
warm you into their newer Bibles and then disable you so that you can't live spiritually. The word of God cannot be broken. It cannot be broken. The moment you take something out, you start tampering with the word, adding or taking away, the word of God is broken. It's not effective anymore. The word of God cannot be broken. It's like a circuit, as we were saying on Sunday. Once you open that circuit, there's no power. You close that circuit, there's power flowing through. It's the same thing with the word of God. We must make a lot of fuss about things that are taken out. Like I said to you, we're going to discover, we've seen one Bible, a reference Bible somewhere, with, that's a counterfeit King James Version. Okay? So we're going to deal with the counterfeit King James Version. Mainly Zondervan and Thomas Nelson, but there's more. There's more as well. So, then we're, we're going to talk about the main objections to the newer Bibles as well. Then we're going to look at the fruit of newer Bibles and the King James Version Bible. Then we're going to look at the extra canonical books, like the Apocrypha books. These sort of books, Book of Enoch and the Apocrypha. There are some, there are some people who have been commissioned to... to introduce these books to society and the way that they introduce it watch this is that practically every subject in the bible they more or less get right according to how we see it anyway let's just let's go as far as that according to how we see things in the bible they get it right but lo and behold you start hearing let's turn to the book of esdras it's the book of tobit i'm like hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on they, they are, they are, they've been commissioned, okay? They must speak everything right, but they must also use these books. There are some skillful men on the pulpit, and they will preach everything that you believe. <laughs> and then they'll, they'll tell you to turn to the book of Enoch. They'll say the book of Enoch is inspired. It's there in the Bible. If it's there in the Bible, then it must be, it must be this book here. But where do these books come from? We're going to talk about that. The um, extra canonical books, canon, the Roman Catholic canon, anyway. <laughs> um, then we're going to talk about the change and the omitted verses also. This may not be in order. I think we, we, you can get all of these things in every session. Um, so I'm just giving you an idea of what we're going to be covering. The history of the Bible, including holy men of God and vile men as well. Plus the lie about King James' character. You heard about, he was homosexual. You heard that one? Well, that's, that's a lie. Okay, the lie about being, the Bible being based on pagan myths. You heard that one? Yeah? On the old pagan myths, Egyptian mythology, and so on. Uh, we'll talk about that. And also as well, this is important, the effect of false Bibles, um, translations or versions, on society, including government, churches, religions, families, media, and you. This is a bit premature showing you this, but let me just show you. You heard of these guys, isn't it? Hillsong. Well, we'll show it to be Hellsong. <laughs> it's not so Hillsong, it's a Hellsong. These, 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 this church are proponents for false Bibles. Um, they are majorly used to propagate false Bibles and other things as well, which we'll come to in the weeks to come. All right, I said 2 Peter, isn't it? 2 Peter chapter 2, chapter 1, excuse me, from verse 16. Help me read, please. 1, 2, 3, and go. Mm. Knowing this first, that 
and no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Mm. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but only men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Let, let's get some scriptures that just give us an idea about that being moved um, by the Holy Ghost. It's, it's a little bit like a vessel um, like, or a ship that is moved by the wind. We're, we're vessels of treasure fellowship here. And by the grace of God, we're moved by God. Okay, so it's a little bit like that. Let's look, just look at a few scriptures, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, just to give us an idea of what it means that about these men being moved. Okay, but you can help me read. Yeah, you, you go ahead and read. It's on the board. One, two, three, and go. But we have in earthen vessels that what? The excellency of the power. The moving may be of God and not of us. That's practically what that scripture is also saying as well. And um, 2 Peter, that we've just read the last verse there. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 4. One, two, three, and go. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Go on. Began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. A similar idea there also. A similar thing also there. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 1, 2, 3, and go. Same Spirit of faith. As it is written, I believe. Believe in who? You believe in God. And then what happened? And therefore, so that belief in that God has pressed upon you to speak. So what? We also, yes? We also believe and therefore speak. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. 1, to 3 and go. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. God is in control here. Genesis chapter 1. From 2B to 3A, 1 to, 1 to 3 and go. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. So the moving of the Spirit is very important for the transition of God's Word from generation to generation. Okay, from the transmission, for the transmission of God's Word from generation to generation. The moving of the Spirit of God is very important. Let's look at this verse a little bit because it's just talking about inspiration of Scripture. So there's four points I want to just deduce from this. Okay. Number one. What the holy men of God spake in regards to prophecy. That's number one. What the holy men spake in regards to prophecy. What about it? It was not of them. It wasn't of them. Who was it of? It was of who? God. And also as well that their speech actually can be traced back to the Holy Ghost. That's quite important. Their speech can be traced, traced back to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost that moved upon them. Okay? Basically they were inspired. These men were inspired. This is still point number one. They were inspired. These men were inspired. Listen very carefully to where we're going here. These men were inspired. Did you hear that? They were inspired of God. They went beyond their own cap capacity. We're only earthen vessels. They went beyond their own capacity. You could tell it was evidential that there was a spirit, the spirit of God was upon them because they went beyond their own capacity. Okay? God sanctified them for this holy mission. It's God who did it. Because it's, it's his word. It's God's word we're dealing with here. Okay, so God, God's not just going to move on anyone. They have to be holy men in terms of, yes, their lives were holy, but more so that God's holiness, God's pressing was upon their lives. Okay, God's pressing was upon their lives because it's a mission here. Now, if this is the case, the second point is this, which brings us to the second point, which is this. 
If these are holy men who are speaking what God has said, then we ought to pay close attention. We ought to pay close attention. That's very important indeed. We need to take heed, is what the Bible says. I've got some scriptures here we're going to read again. Let's just warm up to this and just get this scripture, very imperative scripture, in place first so that we can, um, we can enjoy the rest of it. Because otherwise, don't just want this to be about, let me show you Bible, so what's wrong? We, 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 need, we need to know this part. This is very important. Amen. So we need to take earnest heed. And there's some scriptures for you. I'm going to get you to read once again. Hebrews chapter, can you see that? Okay. Hebrews chapter 2, 1 to 4, 1, 2, 3, and go. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed. Yes. You see that? Earnest heed to the things you've heard less than any time. I call these any times. I call these any times. These here. Many people have, have gone away from the King James Version Bible. It says it's too archaic. It's a hard read. There are some words in the newer Bible that's harder to understand than the King James. We'll, we'll bring it out maybe sometime today or, or next week. There are some words in all of these newer Bibles that are harder to understand than the King James Bible. Oh, it's too archaic. No, it's called laziness. People don't want to study anymore. They just want something. They want God to come to their standard because God should come down to our, our level on how we understand English to be. But God has got a standard. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to come up to God's standard, isn't it? But they want God to come down to their standard. It's not that hard to understand. It's not a major... This is proper English. If you want to know what English is, this is proper English, King James Version. All these newer Bibles are, I tell you, let me, let me just, <laughs> uh, let, me, let me give you an idea of the, the message Bible, yeah? I can just turn to anywhere and it's, 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 it's ugly. You've started, so finish. You have liberated Jesus, the nod, as your new boss. So now build on the foundation and live like you're walking on solid ground. Live like you're happy about it. <laughs> Make sure you don't get tangled up in flashy arguments that turn off, that turn out to be waffle. What's it based on? If the answer is tradition or common sense, then forget it. Like I say, build on the liberator. His normal, his normal, Joe flesh and blood was jam packed full of divine DNA. Are you going to grow with that? <laughs> what, what kind of growth are you going to get from that? <laughs> that's what you call madness. Okay, that's, called, that's the street Bible by a man called Rob Lacey. And we're going to look at that. Guess, guess who the publishers are? Zondervan. You guessed. Next scripture, or um, continue where you were, should I say. Where were we? Verse 3. Verse 2, for if the word spoken by angels was, yes, yes, how shall we escape? Yes, 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 the point here is we need to hear what is moved by God. Very important indeed. Otherwise, you're going to wonder, which is one of the points we're coming to. Yes, go on. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Hebrews 3, 7 to 16. Let's go. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith. Sorry, this is not all of them, the verses. I just took um, three verses from there. So as the Holy Ghost saith. Say what? Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Verse 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. This, all this array of false Bibles is an evil heart of unbelief. 
People who don't want God. They don't want God. So they'll, they'll manipulate the word of God. Guess who, guess who the first Bible corrector was and Bible critic? Eve. We'll come to her later. She's the first Bible corrector. The first Bible critic she added and took away. And who's the one who, who seduced her? Satan. In the serpent. Okay, where are we? Chapter 4, 1. Yes, evil heart depart from, God, from, from the living God. Chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear. Fear. Lest the promise be left us or enter into his rest. Yes. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Mm hmm. See that ye refuse not to Hebrews 12:25 to 29. One, two, three, and go. See that ye refuse not If they escape not who refuse him, yes. 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 Yet once more I shake not the earth only, mm -hmm. also heaven. Mm -hmm. And this word, yet once more, signify the removing of those things that are shaken, mm -hmm. as of these things are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Well, these won't remain. We're just going back to false Bibles again. What I'm trying to say to you, what doesn't stand is not the word of God. The things that are shaken, it's, it's all about words. It's words versus words. That's what life is about. Even you're made up of words. Even you're made up of words. It's all about words. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was a God. Well, we got some Bibles that are like that. Because they want to diminish um, the, the, the superiority of Christ himself. That Christ himself is God. So we're going to go to those scriptures soon as well. Where were we? 28. Well, so Charmaine, you're sharp. One, two, three, and go. Wherefore, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Now, point number two, like I said, is that if the Holy Ghost has moved upon the holy men, and they have spoken according to how they were moved, we ought to take earnest heed. We ought to apply ourselves to understanding. Remember Philip and Ethiopian eunuch? Philip, very quickly, for a reason. It was something urgent. There was a man reading the Bible. That's dangerous. Reading the Bible without understanding is dangerous. So the Lord hurried his feet up to catch up with the Ethiopian eunuch, and he said to him, the first word he said to him is what? Understandest thou what thou readest? He said, how can I understand except someone um, interpret to me or give me um, the meaning of it? And so Philip began to speak to him um, on his subject, and then he was baptized, okay? Understand is important. We need to apply ourselves to understanding what God has said. These, seems like, these seem like elementary things, but you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. We need to go back to ABC sometimes. Okay, to remind us that if God has spoken, we ought to listen. The third point is this. In fact, I'm not even going to do the third point yet. Okay. Look at verse 19, please, of 2 Peter. This is how we must listen. You, you could say in short, fear and trembling. Okay. Look at verse 19. Read verse 19 for me, please, because this is, this is how we're supposed to listen. This is how we're supposed to pay attention. Go on, read it for me. One, two, three, and go. More sure word. Stop there. Stop there. Just before you go further, there are two proofs that are being spoken of here. You, you heard in the previous verses how Peter had seen Christ in that, on that mount, that glorious majesty and so on. That's great. You remember the Mount of Transfiguration when they saw Moses 
and they saw him, Elijah and Jesus and Jesus' brightness lit up Moses and Elijah, showing that Jesus Christ was greater. Okay? And the voice said, Hear ye him. That was a vision, or that was a, a reality, something that actually happened, which Peter and James and John marked. And then Peter goes on to say, the second proof is this. We actually have a more sure word of prophecy. The second proof is even stronger than the first proof. And the second proof is that we have a more sure word of prophecy. Now watch how you're supposed to pay attention. Because this is what we're talking about here, paying attention. Okay? Something we Christians struggle with sometimes. Will that, can I get an amen there? Some, something we Christians struggle with. So here's another opportunity where God's speaking to us all again. And saying, hear me out. Hear what I've got to say. So how should you, this is, this is how we should pay attention. Go on. As what? To a light. Let me, let me bring it home for you a little bit more. The way that you're supposed to pay attention is as a light that is shining in a very dangerous place and dark place. You cannot live unless you have that light. You will stumble. You will hurt yourself. You'll be depressed. You will feel low. Onsets of sadness and depressions and all sorts of things come upon you when you don't pay attention like a light that is shining in basically a very dangerous and dark place. That's what this world is today. A lot of people don't see it, how dangerous and dark this world is. And that without the light of God, without his word, we will stumble, we'll become depressed. Onsets of all sorts of moods and everything sets on you when you don't listen to God's word. How we ought to pay attention is desperately. With fear and trembling, we were speaking about this on Sunday as well. God, um, Jesus said, strive to enter in at the straight gate. Because many seek, they're just interested. I hope that we didn't come here today because we're just interested in enforced Bibles. And we want to know what's going on. I pray we came here so that we can grow. And we can know how to discard of false Bibles which don't only come in books like this, but also come as arrows and all sorts of other ways. I hope that we, we come here to, to learn how to discard of those voices and to only hear the voice of God. No two voices are the same. None. I, I, I do audio editing and I could put any of your voices... Um, on um, the system and I guarantee you I will find the differences in the partials in the in the frequencies I guarantee you I'll find differences in all your voices even if you sound alike the partials when you get really really deep into the wave now you look into the wave and you zoom into the wave I guarantee you the partials will be different because no two voices are the same God's voice is not the same as any other voice. So we need to train our spiritual ears to hear him more and to pay attention to the voice that's speaking to us because this world is dark. And if you want to know why all the sadness and depressions and so on, it's because we haven't quite got the light right there. And we're trying to walk in a dark world on our own. We're trying to do it on our own. We're trying to move on our own. <laughs> that's why it's happening so, so the way to pay attention is desperately like this is your life like I, I, I can't do anything unless I have this light of God's word because it's going to guide you step by step bit by bit okay that's how God leads God don't lead in come on we're just going to fly <laughs> God leads you by instruction, step by step. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And then what? A light unto my path. The word of God shows me bit by bit how I should go and gives me understanding as I go along. That's the light. Okay? Without the word, it's a sad world. 
Without the word, it's a sad world for you to live in. It's sad anyway, but we need a light. Okay, so that's the, that's, that's the idea here that it's very dark. Not everything is clear. Okay, sometimes you're perplexed, sometimes embarrassed and all sorts of things. So we need, we need to take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Unto what happens? There's a fourth point now. Unto what happens? No, not just the third point, sorry. Unto what happens? Go on. Day dawn. That there is a fourth point. But the third point is, if you don't take heed, you will wonder. Amen? You'll wonder. Yeah? Have you seen it? All these are wonderings. Many people have gone for these Bibles. They don't know it. But they do, kind of. They've gone for these Bibles because of their desires. The King James Version hits hard. <laughs> like I said to you, I enjoy the Bible. I enjoy reading, but there are some times I don't always enjoy it. Because it, it, it challenges you. You could be by yourself or someone else is speaking. It don't matter. The Word challenges you. Your conscience is telling you something and you're trying to fight it with your mind. You been there? Yeah, your conscience is telling you something. It's like the word is pricking you, but you're trying to give reasons. These Bibles give you the reasons. <laughs> They'll help you, whatever reason you want. Because they're broken. They don't have any power. They're broken. It's lost power. Why? In fact, it never had any power. Why? Because it's not the word of God. It's not the word of God. So that's point three. If you don't take heed, you're going to wander. Yeah? You're going to wander. And when a wanderer has been deceived, you know, he suddenly feels that everything is fine. He's, he doesn't feel he's been deceived. Because he's actually on a new path now. A path of his desires. So he can't see that he's been deceived. Okay? So that, that wanderer is going. And we pray that it's not a backsliding in the heart. And number four, the fourth point is this. Faithful hearers will at length witness eternity's light, which is Christ. The Bible says, unto the day dawn and day star arises in your heart. So faithful hearers will at length witness eternity's light, which is Jesus Christ. The day will dawn and the day star will arise in your heart. What a cheek. For some of these Bibles to call Jesus Lucifer or Lucifer Jesus. Do you hear what I said? Let's look at NIV. You haven't got it. Praise God. <laughs> you got your King James there? Please read Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 for me, please. I think it's 14, 12. Isaiah 14, 12. You saw what we just read there, didn't you, about the day star? Yeah. Isaiah, please. Isaiah 14, and read verse 12 for me, please. Okay, that's the only reference of Lucifer in the Bible. Yeah, it's the only time Lucifer is there. All right, now let me show you what NIV calls. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. <laughs> you have been cast down to the... It doesn't sound right because it isn't. <laughs> you have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. But it calls him the, the O morning star. Who's a morning star? Who do you know is a morning star? Jesus, the bright and morning star. They're calling Lucifer morning star. Hmm, interesting. What's this one? This one is, um, that's the New International Version as well. Let's look at, I don't know. What's this one? Good news? Let's see what good news says. I can't remember what good news says, but let's have a look. And then I'll show you near the end that all these Bibles love each other. They're all brothers and sisters. <laughs> I'll show you a particular scripture. Chapter 14, verse 12. Let's see. Uh, Isaiah 14, yeah? 
12, king of Babylon, king of, Bab king of Babylonia, bright morning star, you have fallen from heaven. Yeah, the, script, the, the, pre, the scripture context does talk about Babylon, but you need, you need to know when God is now referring to Satan. Okay, well, well, we'll pick that up another time and I'll sh actually show you that it, it couldn't be the king of Babylon anymore, literal king of Babylon, but that's talking about Satan himself. We'll come to that another time. But king of Babylonia, bright morning star, you have fallen from heaven. In the past you conquered nations, but now you have been thrown to the ground. How many people had good news Bible when they were younger? I think practically everyone when they were at school had the good news Bible. Well, they're calling Jesus Lucifer or Lucifer Jesus. Let's go to the scripture we read on in um, the 2 Peter. Let's see what it says of, on here. 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1, isn't it? 2 Peter chapter 1. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give some people some Bibles. Um, Lita, come and help me, please. So you can do some reading for me. Who would like the good news? You want the good news? <laughs> Come on, grab it. Come on, grab it. Good news. Come on, use your legs. Yeah, um, Gervais, you grab the good news. Deborah's not happy enough. <laughs> Who wants the Amplified? Amplified Bible, yes. Um, the Cliche. Uh, you want the NIV, Deborah? Well, that was your favorite, wasn't it? Was. <laughs> was your favorite. Who wants the street? Street? No, I'm going to keep the street Bible. <laughs> That's too dangerous. New English Bible, I don't know if we will use this one today, but just hold on to it. Yeah, we will, we will use it. New English Bible, yeah, anyone? We'll leave the Mormon, Mormon Bible for today. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> Who would like the Revised Standard Version, RSV, Revised Standard Version? Okay, Shante, um, Dick and Gabby, maybe you can have the Jerusalem Bible. If you give the Gabby Jerusalem Bible, give Shantae that one. Who would like the New Living Trans? This New Living Translation. Sanchia. It looks as if to me, um, to, um, the Klisha is doing the bidding. <laughs> What's this one? I think this is the NIV. Who would like the CEV? The. Uh, I think I think she is doing it. <laughs> Did you pay her? <laughs> the, the, the CEV, Contemporary English Version. Sister Abby, okay. How much did Nikki should pay you? <laughs> Who would like the New Century Version? Talia. New Century Version. No, Sister Liz shaking her head. All right, New Century Version, Sister Liz. Have I given New King James Version to anyone yet? No, New King James Version, this is the horror. This is, this is the terrible one. Because it says I'm King James. I'm just new. <laughs> I'm new, I'm new, I'm new. I'm new. Who would like? Yeah, is that Eslin yet? Go on. This is um, New King James. This is T.D. Jakes' New King James Version. You know T.D. Jakes? <laughs> woman thou art loose? No, it's woman thou art bound. When he preaches that message, he's, he's really saying, woman, thou art bound. Okay, because you, woman, you don't just break loose. Okay, there are subliminal messages behind this. We won't talk about it today, but there are subliminal messages. Sorry? Rap study. Oh, 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 oh you, is that what you're asking about? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't bought it today. I haven't got it in my collection, actually. So we'll talk about this. Yes, T.D. Jakes, one of the biggest preachers, yeah, and his music stars and so on. And I'm telling you, that, that guy, that guy, what, 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 was the, what was the word he gave? I'm filthy rich. I'm filthy rich, isn't it? That's what he said, yeah, I'm filthy rich. Well, he is filthy. Okay, what have we got here? I, 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 you don't accuse another man of God so easily like that, you know. You better know what you're saying before you open your mouth and say what you say. Okay, so if it's true, you say it. If it's not true, shut your mouth. Okay, so um, I, think this, I think we got this one. So what I'm saying is that I know what I'm saying. <laughs> New Living Translation. We got that one out already, I'm sure. Yeah, we got that one out already. All right. 
Okay, good. The message, message Bible is only good news though. Um, sorry, um, New Testament, New Testament. The message Bible, one more. You've got one, have you? Oh, you gave it out. Give Sister Liz the message Bible. Amen. Oh, wow. Hold it. You're going to need all those Bibles at the end, definitely. But I may ask some of you to read some um, as we go through. So, what we'll be talking about in the next few weeks is the essence of God's Word, which is His Spirit, breath, inspiration. And we're going to talk about the doctrines of inspiration and, and preservation. I'm just laying the foundation today so that you know what we're going to be talking about. So I'm not going to repeat all these next week. Okay? So we're going to go straight into it next week. All right, here's your scriptures um, pertaining to that. Knowing this, 2 Peter 1, 20 to 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's what we just read. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit. Is she all right? Yeah. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. We've all got a particular type of words that are spirit, but they're not necessarily life. Okay, but Christ's words are spirit and they are life. The spirit is small, there for a reason. All right, the S. Have you all got small S? Check your Bibles, please. Gosh, we really have to check this. By the way, any, for any new people who've come in, or anyone who's coming up after we said this, have you... Um, have you um, if you look at your King James Version Bible for me, please. What does it first begin with? Does it begin with, in the beginning, God made the heaven? Or does it say heavens? Because there are counterfeit King James Version Bibles, is what we were saying. Okay, so <laughs> check it out. 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Inspiration, spirit. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, fully furnished unto all good works. Sounds like 2 Peter 1 to me once again. Okay. Now the objective. Our objective is to prove that we have a perfect Bible today. Prove all things the Bible says. We, as I said, we demand a perfect Bible. There is no way that we can, we can live in this 2018 with a Bible we're not sure of. We need a perfect Bible. And so what we're saying is that we believe that the God that we serve can preserve his word and he has inspired his word. And that word is preserved up to today. That Satan and all of his cronies have tried over centuries to try and stop the perfect word of God, but God's come out again. Okay, that's what we're saying here. That the enemy has lost that God has gone past all the obstacles that Satan posed. And in the next few weeks, we're going to talk about all those obstacles. Like I said to you, where did your Bible come from? You can't, someone's going to stop you one day and say, so, so where did your Bible come from? They're going to put doubt in you by the time they finish with you. It's ve they've got very powerful persuasions if you don't know the truth. If you know the truth, it's weak. Their persuasions are weak. But if you don't know the truth, their persuasions are pretty strong. So, prove all things. Let's know where our Bible comes from. Let's trace it back. Trace it right back to Antioch. Amen? We'll trace it right back to Antioch. Who, who was in Antioch? The disciples. Amen? Syria. Not Egypt. Not Alexander. Not Egypt. We don't want, we don't want Bibles from Egypt. <laughs> Egypt is where God said, get out of. So, so... so if he wants us to get out of there, why is he going to give us Bible from there? Okay, we don't want Bibles from Egypt, believe me. So, the objective, perfect Bible. Why? Because if we do not have a perfect Bible, it proves three things. Number one, and this is it, there's no God. If we don't have a perfect Bible, it proves that there is no God. Okay? Because he can't, well, if he can't preserve his word, then can he be God? You know, it's the same argument they have. If God is God, why is all of these things happening? Why, why all the explosions? Why all the deaths? No, no, no. That's not the important thing. That's important, but it's not important as this. If there's a God, has he given us his word and preserved it? Has he given us a way to be saved? 
That's the important question. Not the question of there's killings or so on. Listen, we're all going to die. <laughs> we're all going to die. If you say that someone's died yesterday, fine. It's your turn. Soon. If the Lord tarries for another hundred years, every one of us here will be in a coffin. It's not the main question. The main question is, how am I saved? How do I get saved? <laughs> That's the most imperative thing, wouldn't you say? So that when I die, I know I'm, I'm with the Lord. <laughs> That's the important question. All the other questions are trivial. I, I, know, I, I know, it just sounds like a shock, but they're trivial compared to your salvation. Your salvation is the most important thing. So it proves no God if we don't have a perfect Bible. Number two, there's no way to clarify what God has said. If there is a God, there's no way to clarify what he said and what he hasn't. Okay, number three, God is incompetent of providing proper means of communication between us and him. That's what it's proven if we don't have a perfect Bible. But I have a perfect Bible here. It's called a King James Version Bible. Amen. And it, it's gone from Greek and Hebrew. There's Hebrew there. And there's Greek there. It's gone from Greek and Hebrew. Hebrew, Old Testament, Greek, New Testament. This is what we call the Textus Receptus. <laughs> Help me say it. <laughs> Textus Receptus, the received text. This is the received text. This is what your King James, this is, this, this is the text that underlines your King James Version Bible. This is where it came from. Greek and Hebrew. This is not quite a manuscript because it's in a book. Okay, so it's in printed form. Manuscripts are different. Manuscripts are written form. Okay, but this is in a printed form. And we're going to talk all about this in the next few weeks. Let's just lay the foundation. But this is the Textus Receptus. I bought this um, and I was very happy when I bought it. But guess what? I can't read it. <laughs> so, um, um, uh, where's Isaac? Isaac, come please. Come, quickly. Isaac, I want you to take this Bible, go and evangelize with it. <laughs> Open it up, start reading to me, please. <laughs> now, what's the problem? I, I, I need you to evangelize to some people. Why are you looking at me like that? Come on. All the stuff you've been taught, come on. He ain't got a clue. But nonetheless, thank you. Nonetheless, this is... This is this is the printed form of the originals. King James Version Bible is superior to the originals. In this sense, I can read it. I can evangelize with it. I could talk to someone about, to, about Jesus with it. I can't do that with this. So don't listen to all of these textual critics who tell you, well... You know, the King James Version Bible, it's a translation of the original. So during the transmission and all the trans translation and so on, there's some things that are lost along the way. Because you need the originals. And, and by the way, this Greek and Hebrew text, Old Testament, New Testament, is a copy of the originals. It's a copy? Mm hmm. Um, but by the way, by the way, it's, it's a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. And we don't know how far back of the originals. Yeah. So how do you know that along the way there ain't mistakes? Oh, oh, by the way, which King James Version do you use? Is it the 1611 or the 1769 version? And so on and so on and so on and so on. We've got some questions to answer, okay, because they seem to have a point, but it's actually very weak. It's actually very weak. And we're going to discuss that. At first, it sounds strong. It's like, oh, what, you mean we're not reading the 1611? No, we're not. Huh? But it's supposed to be AV 1611. It is and it isn't. <laughs> um, Sister Esme, thank you for your... Look, this book I purchased from you a while back is very useful, up to today. So this is the King James AV 1611. This is it. Not the original, but this is what it looked like, yeah? 
Who's going to hold this very carefully for me? No. <laughs> Are you going to look after it? Oh, you got one already. Someone without any? Not, preferably not young person. <laughs> Someone who's going to look after this for me, please. Brother Isaiah. I'm actually going to ask you to look at a specific scripture soon. Um, 1 John chapter 5. I'm trying to remember the exact verse. 1 John 5. and there, there's, there's a reason. There's a reason we don't use a 1611. We, we do, but we don't. We, we do as in it was done well the first, in the first place, but... We can't use it for proof reading because it's been not revised, but there's a few things that have happened that we need to correct. Not quite what the translators did, no, but what the printers did. They missed some words out. So, we need another edition, not revision. Two different words. Edition is different to revision. Revision, why? You change meanings. Edition is not the same. Edition, you correct things like typographical errors. Okay? Printing was still fairly new at the time. I'm going to show you a video sometime of what they had to do to print. Yeah? In the early days of printing, they had molds, each letter was a mold and they had it on a metal, you know, like a metal rod or so. Painstakingly, every single word of the Bible had to be painstakingly printed like that. And I'll, I'll show it to you a little later on. It wasn't, it's not just <laughs> photocopy. <laughs> we put stuff on the photocopier and it's done. No, 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 no. Things were very different that time. So... It's not the King James Version translator's fault. And you know, I love God. God doesn't hide anything. He shows that man does have error. But his word still remains. Even though man's error is still there. Even, even the King James translators at first, they included the Apocrypha. And then when they realized what they had done, the horror, they started taking it out. Because God didn't tell them to put it in. But you know, we're, sometimes we're, we're vulnerable at our best. And we're there, we're hearing God out, wherever good is, evil is present. So they kicked this out as quick as they could. Within two years, this was out. So by 16, um, 13. And that's why you have another edition. See? Edition, not revision. Okay. Um, typing errors or printing errors and other errors as well, spelling and so on, are not to do with the integrity of the translators. Okay, it's to do with the error of man. You getting it? Okay, so we're going to look at that in a second. All right, so here's our perfect Bible, authorized version 1611. Let's just say it straight and forward. Um, now, this is what got me into false Bibles. This is what started me off. About 15 years ago now, maybe even longer, I, re I used to have the NIV and I was reading away. And I read a King James Version. It said, and when he had weaned him, when she, when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one epa of flour. Now, when I read the NIV, just to get you know, a bit of clarification, I wish I didn't. Because <laughs> after he was, he was weaned, she took the boy with her young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull. I said, huh? Three bullocks. One, two, three. Three. A three-year-old bullock. One. And that triggered me. I said, what? What? what's going on here? Why is one Bible saying this, another Bible saying that? And the rest is history. Okay. So, we're going to talk about why the Bible is important um, next time. But here's a t here's, here are the two main manuscripts 
And I'm not going to go too much because it's, it's quite technical, this is. So I'm just going to get you to just, you know, get you used to, you know, like the manuscripts first, what, what these manuscripts are, so that you can, you, okay, Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus, whichever way you want to say it, people say it different ways. And Vaticanus. What does, that, what does Vaticanus sound like? Vatican. Who, who, who's that? Roman Catholicism. Okay. So these are the two main manuscripts. I call them Tipex Bibles, personally, or Tipex Manuscripts. Um, these are the two main manuscripts that are responsible for all of these newer Bibles. All of these newer Bibles um, that you've got in your hand there. These are the main two manuscripts. There are others, but these are the two main ones. Okay, um, Sinaiticus and also Vaticanus as well, otherwise known as Codex Aleph or A, they, they categorize them, or Codex B, okay, Codex like a book, okay, so they categorize them and so on. And combined, they're called the critical text. The critical text. Always somebody want to come and criticize God, <laughs> criticize what God has. They're called a the critical text, okay, so help me say it please so that you remember next time. Sinaiticus, Vaticanus. God said, prove all things. Let's go back and let's see what has happened and how you have your Bible today by what's called a textus receptus against these two manuscripts here. When I show you these manuscripts in a few weeks' time, if you see how heavily edited they are, you'll be saying, who got away with that? Look at that cross there and that term there and that cross there. What are they doing? The moment I said, sorry, I said, Tipex Bible. They're crossing things out, writing things again. Why? Because they're trying to make it fit. They're trying to make it fit because there's a lot of errors, a lot of problems there. Okay, so they're responsible for all those newer Bibles that you've got in your hand there. Remember, only the King James Version has a different manuscript, which I've said it to you, which is what? Texas Receptus. Well done. You're listening. So in the Old Testament... The Texas Recept, uh, well, let's, Old Testament is Masoretic text, okay, which is the Hebrew text that translates the Old Testament. The New Testament is Texas Receptus, Greek, Greek New Testament, okay? Just have those in your mind. You just, I just want you to know those so that next time when we're speaking about it, it's not like this is foreign, okay? So you've got the Texas Receptus, and then you've got Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus um, as well. So this is the foundation text. Um, for King James Version, this um, Masoretic text and also the Greek New Testament there as well. And we'll come to um, Yea, have God say of Eve soon. Now, I want to just quickly focus on the New King James Version. <laughs> because New King James Version boasts itself as the King James Version new. <laughs> okay, don't be fooled by the new. Let me read the, the purpose of the New King James Version. One of the things that they've, these are some of the things that are written. So that you realize that they're, they're lying. Somebody described the New King James Version as a, as a drug. It's the drug that you take. It's a quick fix that slowly removes you away from the King James Version Bible. So what people have, have found is that whilst they're reading the King James Version Bible, New King James Version Bible, they seem to push away the King James Version Bible and then take on the New King James Version Bible. Okay? Now, I don't think you want New King James Version after today. And tell your friends as well to get rid of it, please. Okay? So let's just do a, a few stats and let's just understand a bit about the New King James Version Bible. Published in USA in 1982. Um, Thomas Nelson are the publishers. And this is what they stated. We want to produce an updated English version that follows the sentence structure of the 1611 AV, King James Version, as closely as possible. Also to transfer the Elizabethan word forms into 20th century English. Mm. They aim to follow the authorized versions, Masoretic text and the Greek um, received text as well, Textus Receptus. And New King James Version seemed to be an improvement on newer Bibles that were based on the Alexandrian text. There's a new word, isn't it? I said Alexandra earlier, but I've not given you um, much about the Alexandrian text. Well, basically, the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus belong to the Alexandrian text, which is centuries before, which we'll talk about later on. Just don't want to put too much manuscripts in your face today. Okay, let's just get an idea of what's happening. Now, 
this is what this is what they said. This is what the New King James Version said. In harmony with the purpose of the King James scholars, the translators and the editors of the present work have not pursued a goal of innovation. They have perceived the Holy Bible, New King James Version, as a continuation of the labors of the earlier translators, thus unlocking for today's readers the spiritual treasures found, especially in the authorized version of the Holy Scriptures, lie. I'll read some more. It is also universally understood that our language, like all living languages, has undergone profound change since 1611, has it? Really? Subsequent revisions, but yeah, for the worst, we could say. Yeah, wicked man. <laughs> I agree there. Subsequent revisions of the King James Bible, that's a lie. It's not revision. That's a lie have sought to keep abreast of changes in English speech. The present work is a further step towards this objective. It's just lies. A special feature of the New King James Version is its conformity to the thought flow of the 1611 Bible. That's a lie. You, you'll agree with me when we finish. All right, in, here's another sentence. In keeping with the design of the present work, the King James um, spelling of untranslated word is retained. Now, that's a distraction. Listen carefully. That's a distraction. What you've just heard there, I'll read it again, is a distraction from the real issue. It's the, it's the red herring. This is the distraction. I'll read it again. In keeping with the design of the present work, the King James spelling of untranslated words is retained. That's a distraction. Although made uniform throughout. That's a distraction. Now, here's the real thing. They've distracted you already, though. For example, instead of the spellings Isaiah and Elijah in the Old Testament and Esaias and Elias in the New Testament, Isaiah and Elijah now appear in both Testaments. So they don't change it for Greek. It just stays as it is, Isaiah and Elijah instead of Esaias and Elias. Okay? That's quite interesting. Who's got the New King James Version Bible? Sister Eslin. Sister Eslin, you're going to have to do some open quick scripture findings here. Yeah? Um, now you've got your King James Version Bible, yes? Turn to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16, and Sister Eslin's going to also turn there. Can we get a microphone for, for Sister Eslin, please? Is there a spare one? Or one that reaches? Well, Sister Eslin, is it possible to move closer? Maybe for today? Sorry, I'm pulling away from your ushering duties. <laughs> your team may have to take over for a second. Yep, just... Yeah, there's one there, yeah. Sister Eslin, you want to come and sit in front here? We'll put you on hotspot. <laughs> okay, so you all got Hebrews 2.16, yes? You want to read it for me, please? Did you see that? For verily what? Read it loud and clear so Sister Eslin can hear it as well, please. One, two, three, and go. All right. So, Sister Eslin, what have you got in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16, please? For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he hmm? does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Pardon? What's that got to do with what was just said? <laughs> what, what, what has that got to do with what was just said, Sister Eslin? We're going to look at you a lot, believe me. <laughs> We're going to go, uh? So just say that please again for, for us. What does it say? For indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Is that what you've got there? All right. It's talking about, it's talking about nature, isn't it? Yeah. So why are they confusing us? Go to Hebrews 3, 16 also, please. That's talking about the nature of Christ, that is. He humbled himself, didn't he? But um, New King James Version thinks different. Yes? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. King James people, go. Okay, Sister Eslin, please, this one's got to be good. <laughs> You're laughing already. <laughs> For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Pardon? Did, what did it say in your version? Not all who 
<laughs> not all, but it says here what? It was all. All right, <laughs> Alexandria manuscript, which is a contradiction. Okay, and God is not the author of confusion. God don't send you to two manuscripts. All those reading new Bibles are not growing. The scripture is broken. Thank God you got the right Bible. Well, we'll check next week to see if you've got a counterfeit King James Version Bible. God is merciful. Don't get me wrong, he's merciful. But when we now know, we got to change. Okay, so, all right. That's very interesting for me, um, Sister Eslin, that is. You know, um, let's look at, um, look at Proverbs 18, verse 8, please. Proverbs 18, verse 8. All right, we're going to move quick. You're going to give me an extra 10 minutes, will you? Amen. Okay. Another one. Okay. <laughs> Proverbs 18, please. So after all this, go and tell, go and tell your friends politely. Please throw away your King, New King James Version in the bin. Okay? <laughs> Tell them politely, please. Don't, don't force it down them. Okay, Proverbs 18, verse 8. Now, this is terrible. Go on, please. The words they tell bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the inmost parts of the belly. What's the words of a tell bearer like? Wounds. Sister Eslin, please. The words of a of a tail bearer are like tasty trifles. <laughs> <laughs> She's not lying. She's telling the truth. <laughs> it's a dessert. The words of a tail bearer are a dessert. Mm. Mm, and, lovely, yes. <laughs> and they go down into the inmost body. Well, some, some of that, if that's what it's like. It's like tr trifles. <laughs> tasty trifles. Why not? <laughs> Abomination, isn't it? Okay, so Sister Eslin, please read um, Col read um, Colossians chapter three, verse two. Footnotes are footnotes in the newer Bibles are evil. They cause confusion. It's like stick with the text or not. If it's God, it's God. If it's not, it's not. Why do you say one word and then you, you cause people to doubt with footnotes? If it's God's word, then keep it God's word. We know we have a true word here. We don't even need to give any footnotes about it. It's what God has said. We demand a perfect Bible because we need to speak to someone about Jesus and be confident about it. We don't need footnotes. Okay? If they're just there for... Whatever sake, that's fine. But we, we, we need to know that we can read the main text and say this is what we read from. Okay? You're blessed. You have a Bible that you can evangelize with and be confident. Even if something looks a bit contradictory at first, you know, hey, 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 hey. Give you some time on this one. Not you go away saying, I wonder if this is one of those ones. Oh, no. Colossians 3, 2, please. Set your affection on things above. Yes. Not on things on the earth. Yes, Sister Eslin. Set your minds on things above. Mind only? That's not all your affections. Looks like someone's trying to hinder you. Yes, please. Not on things on the earth. Not on things on the earth. Turn to Proverbs. 16, verse 10, New King James Version, they, they teach witchcraft. If you, look, if you look at the screen for a second, the New King James Version is a trinity spell. Okay? What is the triketra doing on the New King James Version Bible? Why have we got a witchcraft symbol on the Bible. What is it doing there? Exodus makes it clear. Chapter 20 verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Acts 17 29 also. For as much then as we are the offspring of God we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. I said to you that I'm going to one day speak to you about um, 
the um, rudiments of the world. And I think it's linked to the Godhead. We can't talk, we can't use, and I'm going to clarify on this, but I'm seeing it. It's like my eyes are opening on this. It seems we can't use matters to explain the Godhead. To explain the Godhead. You can't use things in the world to explain the Godhead. It can get you in a little bit of trouble, which I won't go into it right now, but you, you can see this is what a lot of the Trinitarians do. We don't believe in the Trinity. It's not from God. God did not tell us about the Trinity. God is one. He's not free. He's not free in one. It's these three that bear record are one. And I'll clarify that next time when we also come. But you can see that little sign above there where they say, Father is not the Son. Father is not the Spirit. Son is not the Spirit. Father is God. Son is God. Spirit is God. Ah! So they were going to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. How many gods is that? Three. God the Father. I'm counting three gods there. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, or God the Holy Spirit is what? Three gods. But the Bible says that there is one God. One God. So yeah, yeah, see, it's one God in the middle. Yes, but God the Father, God the Son, let's go back. So you're saying it's God the Son, God the Father. And God, the Holy Spirit, we could turn it back on you. If you say, oh, well, all of these are one, no, let's turn it, reverse, it should work. But it doesn't work, does it? We're going to get free gods here. <laughs> I see something like that in Britain, they, they said, um, Allah, God, Jesus, and something. So why, why Allah come with Jesus? There's three that's, that's the Muslims trying to get in on our God. <laughs> but they can't have him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must repent and surrender to Jesus Christ and you have to believe upon his name then you can be saved you can't, you can't try Allah because what it is is that the word translated God in um, Aramaic or Arabic or so is Allah but another time it, it, it does translate like Allah uh, yeah the Muslims are confused <laughs> Look at these signs. Look where you find them. In witchcraft. In witchcraft. That's where these signs. What's it doing on the Bible? The Holy Bible. Telling New King James Version uh, is, is published and created by witches. Read Proverbs 16 for me, please. Uh, verse six, uh, Proverbs 16, verse 10. One, two, three, and go. A divine is in the midst of the king. Mm. transgressive, not in judgment. Sister Evelyn, please. Divination is on the lips of the king. Divination? What is divination? That's witchcraft. Divination? <laughs> yeah, when you got the New King James Version, it doesn't surprise us. Yes, please. His mouth must not transgress in judgment. Foolishness. Okay, so there's a Trinity spell in the New King James Version. That's why they've got that symbol there. They're trying to cast a spell on you. That's, a, that's three interwoven sixes. You can see it, yeah? Three interwoven sixes. This is one of the New Age Bibles. There's a lot of New Age statements that we're going to show you next week. A lot of New Age statements that the New King James Version used and all of all the other Bibles as well. The one. <laughs> That's very New Age. Okay. Used in specific scriptures. It's as New Age as you can get. Okay. So this is, is, here's some of the scriptures um, that we're going to explore as well. New Testament and um, Old Testament as well. Where New King James Version have totally obliterated the Word of God. Sister Eslin, just one more or two more. And then I'm going to test you all, and then we're finished. Sister Ezra, uh, and, and everybody else, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3. Isaiah 11, 3. Brother um, Isaiah, <laughs> you've got that Bible there. Can you just look up for me where it says, have the Father and the Son? Have the Father and the Son. I think it's 1 John 5, one of those verses there. In the, you might find it hard to read, because that's the original King James 16, 11, where the... The S's look like F. 
and it's in Gothic writing and so on. So it might be a little bit hard to read, but I'm sure you'll pick it out. 1 John 5, somewhere along there, someone could find it. Maybe use your, um, all your technology. Okay, yes, Sister Eslin, please. Um, no, um, the King James Version people first. One, two, three, and go. And shall make him quick to understand in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Mm. Sister Eslin, please. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes. Huh? Nor dis- well, where's the quickening? Uh, quick understanding. Where's the quick understanding? Where is that? It's gone. It's something totally different. So, what did you first start with? One, two, three, go, please. And shall make him of quick understanding. Stop, please, Sister Eslin. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eye. Where's it gone? Confusion. Absolute confusion. Okay, footnotes are terrible as well. <laughs> don't, don't rely on the footnotes. There's footnotes there that will say, or this. It's confusion. You've got to go to someone to get them saved and say, it's this one or this one. They'll say, are you serious? Man makes that error every day. These Bibles are the product of man's imaginations. That's all it is. Okay, which we'll, we'll show in the weeks to come. Well, do you know, by the way, that scripture, Hebrews 3, 16. Who's got Jehovah Witness Bible? No one. Who wants a Jehovah Witness Bible? <laughs> yes, oh, go on, Dante. He's been putting his hand up all the time. Come, come, come grab it quickly, because we're, we're finishing off now. Um, Dante, find for me that scripture earlier that we read, Hebrews 3, 16. Hebrews 3, 16. Because... All the, the newer Bibles and the New King James are just saying what the Jehovah Witness Bible is saying. And, the, and Jehovah Witness is supposed to be way off the scale from, Christ, from being um, a, a Christian so-called religion. But yet the Jehovah Witness Bible says the same thing. So are they that far off after all? Well, it sounds as if all these newer Bibles belong to that Bible as well. It's the same manuscripts. It's exactly the same manuscripts. Okay, what have you got for me, please? Um, let's look at, um, I'm coming to you in a second, Dante, and to his brother Isaiah. Let's look at Daniel. No, 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 that's a footnote. We'll look at that next time. Hebrews 10, 14, please. Hebrews 10, 14. Hebrews 10, 14. So, so far, is the New King James Version the King James Version? No. I doubt it very much. I doubt it very much. Have you got it, Dante? Hebrews 3.16. 3.16. Go on, read it loud and clear. For who were they that heard and yet provoked to bitter anger? Did not in fact all you say who went out of Egypt? All, not some. Thank you, Dante. All. That's a Jehovah Witness. That's New World Translation. Jehovah Witness Bible. It says all, but the King James says some. <laughs> and, and Jehovah Witness says all, like all these other Bibles. Amazing. Okay. Yes. What have we got? He, Hebrews 10, 14. Go. One, two, three, and go. What have we got, Sister Eslin? For by one offering he was perfected forever those who are being sanctified. They're being sanctified, but they're perfected. We, we do believe in sanctification as a process, don't get me wrong. But why don't you stick with the text? You know, like you've got to invent something new to teach us. And I'll, I will give you what so many people say on that scripture. Um, next week pertaining to the work of Christ being finished um, they might call it one saved or we're saved which I said I don't, I, don't, I don't want to subscribe to one saved or we're saved I don't want to subscribe to you can lose your salvation I subscribe to if you're truly saved you're saved yeah if you're truly saved you're saved <laughs> if you truly came in with your heart you're saved 
If you didn't, then don't fool yourself. Okay, be saved. Okay, love the Lord with all your heart. Let's look at... Have you, uh, you, you haven't read it? Yes, you did, you did. All right, all of you with Bibles, yeah, as we finish now. Look, look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14, please. You know, Satan's focus was the living word when he was there, but the living word has ascended now. His focus is now the written word. Okay? His focus is the written word. 1 Timothy, chapter 5, and you're going to read for me uh, um, when I read. This is what the King James Version says. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children. So find in your Bibles, please, not the King James, the ones that I've given you, please. And we're going to move quick, all right, real quick. Okay, so I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So this is an encouragement to young women, yeah, to marry whilst they're young. Okay, it's an encouragement to young women to marry marry whilst they're young, if they can. Okay, if the opportunity is there, and the, the person is there, and so on, and every, all the other situations meet well, marry while you're young. It's, it's a scripture that's encouraging that. All right? So now watch. <laughs> you've got your versions, yeah? What have you seen? You've, seen you, you've heard me say younger women, yeah? Younger women, younger women, younger women, younger women. Keep the younger women, younger women, younger women, younger women, younger women. <laughs> Younger women. All right, let's start from this side. Who's got Bible down that side? Let's just go. Please read yours real quick. So I advise these younger widows. The younger who? Widows. widows. What Bible is that? The NLT. That's the NLT, New Living Translation. <laughs> Who's got another Bible there, please? Who else got a Bible right down that side? No one? All right, let's move to this side. Yes, Sister Abby. I would prefer that young widows get married. Young widows. Have children and look after their family. That's fine. What, what did I say? Younger women. But we're hearing widows here. Yes? Who else has got one? 1 Timothy 5, 14. That's the Jehovah Witness Bible, isn't it? That's fine. That's all I want, Dante. That's the Jehovah Witness Bible. They say widow as well. Who's got Bible here? Yes? Go on. <laughs> it is my wish, therefore, that young widows shall marry again, have children, and preside over a home. Well, then they will see. give no opponents. <laughs> no. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> we'll come to that next time because time is gone now. We've got to finish. Thank you, um, Patricia. Who's got Bible here? Yes? Okay, Younger Widows, once again. What, what book was yours, um, Patricia? Um, Amplify, was it? New English, Bible. New English Bible. New English Version, NEV. Amplified, Amplified Bibles, what um, the cliche has got. All right, who's got Bible down this side? Yes, Shantae. So, have Younger Widows. Do you, do, you, do you think these Bibles all come from the same source? Younger Widows, yes, please. Bear children, rule their household, and give the enemy no occasion to revile us. I don't know why all these newer Bibles are running away from Younger Women. To younger widows. <laughs> Where are they running to? Okay, who else got a Bible this side? Is Deacon Gabby, yes? Which, this, which your one is? Jerusalem Bible. Jerusalem Bible, and your one is um, Shante? Revised Standard. Revised Standard Version. Yes, please, Deacon Gabby. I think it is best for young widows to marry again <laughs> and have children at, at home to look after and not give the enemy any chance to raise a scandal about them. <laughs> Praise God. That's a Jerusalem Bible. Is this the Liz? No, I'd rather the young widows go ahead and get married in the first place. What's wrong with younger women? Is there a discrimination here against younger women or something? Or is there a promotion of sexual promiscuity of younger women? A widow may be older. And in fact, usually when you think about widows, you usually think about older persons. So why are they all going to widows? Who else got next Bible? Yes, Sister um, Deborah, then Brother Gervais, I think, has got as well. What, what, what Bible have you got? NIV. NIV. As for young widows, do not 
put them on such a list or when <laughs> sensual desires overcome their dedication to Christ, mm -hmm. they want to marry. I think I think the message is, the, the message the message is lost in man's imagination. <laughs> the message is just gone. <laughs> Brother Gervais, that was um, NIV. This is Brother Gervais, and and by the way, we're gonna the drum roll for the last one in a minute. Sister Eslin's one, New King James. This has got to say younger women because it follows King James version. That's what we read earlier. Brother Gervais, what one have you got? Good news, good news translation. Bad news translation. Go on. So I would prefer that the younger widows get married, have children, and take care of their homes so as to give our enemies no chance of speaking evil of us. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now, Sister Eslin, you have to... Sister Eslin, you have got the closest Bible. Sister Leah. Sister Leah. Oh, Sister Leah. Go on. What have you got? What, what, what book is it? Sorry? New Century Version, NCV. Yes, please. There you go. Widows again. Sister Liz, you've done yours, have you? Drum roll, please. We must hear women in the New King James Version. Yes. Therefore, I desire that the younger widows... Widows? <laughs> ...marry, bear children, manage the house... Give no opportunity to the adversary to speak repro reproachfully. Is there a scandal here or something? Is there some kind of conspiracy? Yes, there is. They're all conspired against the King James Version. But to the glory of God, we know the truth and the truth has made us free. We won't follow all these newer Bibles. And I'm telling you, we're, this is just the tip of the iceberg. These Bibles are destructive. They're destructive. They are Roman Bibles. They belong to the Vatican. Okay? They sound close to the real deal, some of them, but they're far from it. If you have friends, encourage them lightly, but firmly, to dash these Bibles in a bit. Or give it to me, I'll take it as a collection. Okay, so we can maybe one day we can have a big bonfire. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Sorry I've taken quite a bit of your time. Oh, yes, well done. I, lo I love Charmaine. She remembers all these things. Did you find it, um, Brother Isaiah? Yes. Yes, is it 5-7? Just find your King James Version. Let's just see. No, it's not 5-7. It's not. It's, um... you know, it's 1 John. It's definitely 1 John. 1 John 5. There's no, don't, don't run away from that. 1 John 5, he that has the Father has the Son also, something like that. 1 John 4. 1 John 5, definitely 1 John 5. Yeah, yes, what's that, Sanchez? Which one is that? Which 1 John 5? No, 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 it's not that one. 12, yes, 12, sounds, that sounds good. Yeah, he that has the, the Son of God has life, that one? Yes, yeah, go on. And he that has the, not the Son of God has not life. That's the one. Now, what does it say in yours, brother um, Isaiah? This is why you can't use the 1611 for proofreading. All right? It's the right Bible, but it's, it's not the fault of the translators, the printers. Yes, please. He that hath the Son has life, and he that hath not the Son has life. What's missing there? Of God. of God. Two words are missing. Okay? That's not, that's not a conspiracy. That's man getting over his errors. And next week we'll, we'll, we'll show you why that is the Bible. That's the true Bible. That's the King James Version. But it's not complete. There are some things missing. There are some errors in it. But there is no um, dubious characters here. It's just the printing. And typographical errors, spellings, and so on, so on, so on. God bless you all. Let's pray. Amen.